yeah, I chopped my hair all off and what about it? Move on. It's gonna be back for the rest of the video. So get over it. <laughs> What's up everybody D-Man back, welcome to a brand new Godzilla news and updates abridged. Now for those of you who don't remember this series or don't know how it works, this is a throwback to something I used to do way back in the day in 2018. Basically because my news videos have gotten so long lately, I'm taking small segments of those videos and posting them as their own separate smaller highlights for people who don't want to watch the longer videos. But don't worry because I'm still going to be building upon and expanding the stuff I talked about in that video so it still has original new fresh content in here it's just built around something that I've already talked about. So it's still gonna be new stuff. Without further ado, let's get into the topic of today's video, which is the potential to revisit 2014 moments in the upcoming Monarch TV series. Revisiting moments from a previous movie in an upcoming movie, or show in this case, is not new. I mean, this is kind of like the Back to the Future 2 effect, where you go back in time to the events of the first movie, and now you can have Marty running around during the events of the first movie, but from a brand new perspective. It's awesome, everybody loves it, it's so cool whenever films do this. Of course, another iconic memory that comes to mind of something that did this was the BVS effect, where at the start of BVS we see the Man of Steel ending battle but from Bruce Wayne's perspective, which is arguably, in my opinion anyways, the best scene in the entire DCEU. It's always fun to revisit classic moments in upcoming projects, and I have a feeling that the Monarch show is not going to stray away from this. The Monarch show we of course know is going to be set in the year 2014 and is going to be a direct follow-up on Godzilla 2014. Years and years ago when Shin Godzilla came out, I pitched the idea of something less of a sequel and more of a parallel story. My pitch when Shin Godzilla came out was, I would love to see a movie that is the exact same plot of Shin Godzilla, it's set during the same time as Shin Godzilla, but it's about a family trying to escape Godzilla during one of his attacks. That's the big thing in the movie, is that you're on the ground level from a civilian perspective, and every time they try and evade Godzilla, he shows up right where they have run to, and we the audience know that's going to happen because we have of course seen Shin Godzilla, we know his pathing, but it creates this interesting thing where we're seeing these events that were originally from a very cold, disconnected government perspective from a very intimate ground perspective. I think the Monarch show is going to do something similar, where we are going to see the human toll that the Battle of San Francisco actually took. Godzilla King the Monsters already sort of kind of revisited the Battle of San Francisco, although myself as well as many others question that moment's authenticity in terms of the coloring is totally different throwing it off. Godzilla's design, of course, being something of a hybrid between the 2014 Godzilla and the one in King of the Monsters, and then the fact that there's no Mutos, and that Godzilla being where he's at doesn't really line up with where he's at in the 2014 movie when the Halo Jumpers drop. It was still an exciting moment, I'm still glad they did it, but I'm hoping that Matt Shackman, who is going to be directing the first couple episodes of the Monarch series, and presumably will be the one to follow up on 2014 directly, I'm hoping that Matt Shackman will take us back to the Battle of 2014, show us new perspectives, and give us a new insight on that battle from a new angle. I really hope that he color filters it the correct gray tones where it's hard to see what's going on. I also really, really, really desperately hope that this whole show, the whole thing, uses the 2014 Godzilla design, or at least as close of a recreation as they can possibly do to that 2014 design, because the odds are the assets for the 2014 movie no longer exist, and the chances of the same VFX people working on this show that worked on that movie is pretty low, so who knows who's going to be doing it, and who knows if they're going to be able to reuse those previous assets, I'm hoping that they're just able to recreate them, hopefully very faithfully. Now, to take it from here, I'm going to let past me do the rest of the video. He's going to run you through some of the potentials for moments we could revisit in this show. If I was going to take a bet, and you can quote me on this later, I'd be willing to guess we are going to, within the first episode or two, spend some time with our characters, probably Kate, because she's the one in San Francisco, and her family, and maybe Hiroshi? I believe Hiroshi, Kentaro's father, also spends time in San Francisco and Japan. I think because because of that and because he's tied to Monarch directly, I think him and Kate are going to be in San Francisco during the attack along with Kate's family. My prediction is we are going to revisit key Godzilla moments from that movie. I don't think we're going to see anything new. I think we're only going to revisit previous moments, but I think we're going to revisit, if I had to guess, I'd be willing to guess we're going to see some alternate perspectives of moments like the Golden Gate Bridge, the Halo Jumpers, because we love to see the Halo Jumpers and we see them all the time, and, and maybe like the Atomic Breath or the Kiss of Death. Maybe 
you even see an alternate angle of Godzilla heading back to sea? Now, I don't actually know. For all I know, they don't even revisit the Battle of San Francisco and we just move right on to the actual aftermath and, and hey, this is where the show picks up. It's already done. If I had to guess just based on the way that the MonsterVerse has gone previously, based on King of the Monsters, based on what people seem to be interested in revisiting from those movies, those are going to be the moments I would think we would see again. Maybe we don't see all of them, maybe we only see some of them, but my point is these are the moments that I think have the most potential, specifically the Golden Gate and the ending, either the Kiss of Death or Godzilla heading back to sea. I think those three moments are moments we might revisit, which would indicate to me these are the moments Matt Shackman is going to be working with. That's what he's going to be spending his time on, is those moments, not like Godzilla beating up new monsters that we really haven't seen yet. I mean, maybe there'll be a little bit of that, but I would guess because we're still so early into the show, that would probably be stuff I'm going to assume would come in the finale, not in the first pilot. I think the pilot is going to be mostly contained to the Battle of San Francisco. That would be my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> One thing that I didn't talk about in that previous clip that I think could be interesting is if we revisit something like Hawaii, the battle in Hawaii, where we never really got to find out what happens between Godzilla and the Muto in Honolulu, or Vegas, if we see the destruction of Vegas from a new perspective. I think either of these two opportunities would be fantastic, specifically the Hawaii one, because it would make good on the promise that was not delivered on in the 2014 movie. I think that could be super interesting. I don't think we're going to revisit anything but San Francisco. I think San Francisco is going to be the drop point for the show. I think we are going to start out mid events of Godzilla 2014, or at least I think we're going to start like an hour before Godzilla makes it to San Francisco. Like imagine we start the episode with Kate and we're going about her business as a teacher and then she gets news that the Titans are incoming and she's evacuating the city and as she's trying to get out of her house or something in the distance there's Godzilla on the Golden Gate and he's coming towards and it's like the world is ending. You know I think something like that could be really apocalyptic dark and scary. I think it would set the tone for this show being very personal especially if it's something like Kate's on the phone with her mom. She's like get out of the city. You know just get out of the city. Her mom's on. I don't know why I think her mom's gonna die. Her mom is a reoccurring character. Odds are her mom is not gonna die but I have a feeling that her mom is gonna get wounded by Godzilla and a moment where that could happen would be imagine. Imagine you're just setting the stage. Kate's at school and there's all this chaos going on in the world. Monsters exist. We know that Godzilla and the Muto have just leveled Honolulu. We know that there is a Muto rampaging across the country that spawned in from Las Vegas and now Kate's on the phone with her mom and she's like you gotta get out of the city and her mom's driving in the car and she's trying to get out of there and she takes the Golden Gate Bridge and we the audience are like oh no we know what's coming we understand the danger and as she's driving across the bridge you see a school bus pull up and you're like oh no now it's happening and then all of a sudden you see all the military men run across the bridge and there's Godzilla and we're seeing it from this horrifying perspective we're watching from Kate's point of view as we see in the distance her mom maybe on FaceTime or on on the phone and we hear her mom and the chaos and Godzilla in the distance and we see him rise up in this big silhouette and then he knocks down the bridge and, and oh my god it'd be it'd be great that would be such an incredible way to open the show and then you'd cut to the title card and we see the intro sequence and then we're in it now we're after the events of San Francisco and we're on a roll and the show is going what a great opening to the show that could be <laughs> I don't know about you guys or it could be something like we're starting off in the events of 2014 Kate and her mom are running through the city they're like oh we gotta get out of here it's it's so crazy the halo jumpers have fallen you know there's there's maybe some maybe we do the thing that we do where we start out with the shot of the halo jumpers dropping in like King of the Monsters and they're running through the city you're like, we gotta get out of here. And then all of a sudden, this big explosion goes off and knocks Kate and her mom off their feet. And she's trying to pick her up. And she's like, come on, mom, we gotta go. And in the distance, you see this blue light just strike across their faces. And we, the audience, know exactly what's about to happen because we've seen this all before. And we watch from the back end perspective as Godzilla's spines light up and he twists and blasts the Muto right towards us. And now we're running away from the Muto as his atomic breath is striking it. <sighs> I think there is so much potential to revisit the events of this movie. I think you can do so much with it and I am so excited to see what they do. Or, or, or just another pitch to build off what I was previously talking about. Imagine we're starting the show with Kate rescuing her mom. It's Her mom's got to get injured, right? Because she needs an excuse to go to Japan to start digging into her family's affairs, right? So I'm assuming her mom's going to be injured. That's where it all stems from. Or maybe not. Maybe Kate's just been rescued out of the rubble and she climbs up out of the same hole that El Brody was stuck in, you know, something like that. And now she's like all dusting herself off and oh, she's so injured and then all of a sudden Godzilla comes walking through the city and people are cheering for him but she's just glaring at him knowing knowing that he is the monster that caused this or whatever and maybe she's sitting there watching Godzilla get up maybe she watches Godzilla get up off the ground and she actually sees it and she looks over and she sees Sarazawa and Graham over there on the hill and we can use stock footage to do that sure 
I mean, I don't think we need to get the actors back for that. She looks over and she sees them. Oh, but then she looks over and she sees her father, Hiroshi, standing in the distance. And he goes over and starts talking to some other men in suits. And she realizes he knew. And she calls to him and he sees her and he turns and keeps going. You're like, oh, her dad's involved. He totally knew and he doesn't care. <laughs> I don't know. Think about so many different potentials that you could take this in. And I'm very excited to see what they do. Of course, they could just start after the Battle of San Francisco and be like, well, it's all done and over with. Let's just, let's get on with the show as a show. Let's let it have its own identity. But if I were involved in this project, I couldn't resist but to play with something in the 2014 movie. And I have a feeling that Matt Shackman is gonna have that same desire and be like, I've got to follow up on something. I've got to take a new look at something. Thing. All right, that'll do it for this one, guys. Normally, the news abridged don't have this much commentary from modern day me. Normally, it's just the segment from the previous video, but I just wanted to build upon what I was talking about in that video. So that's, of course, why I spent so much time on it. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. Their support really does go a long way towards keeping this channel running. If you want to support the channel, you can use the link in the description below, or you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. And that'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. For the next one, D-Man, out.